Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And welcome to, this is an interesting number, 167 <laughs> uh, of well, we Sounding the Shadows. We, we didn't know it was interesting. No, we now didn't we know it was, it but, but we now know that our our constant communicator on the subject uh, will always come up with something. And this is an interesting one. He says, do you know... First of all, he says, do you know Martina Navratilova? Well, of course we know Martina Navratilova. Not personally. Great tennis player. But she has um, apparently uh, 167 tennis titles, which is um, an all-time record for either a man or a woman. <laughs> Thank you for it's that. It's absolutely ridiculous. 167 tennis titles yeah. <laughs> well I don't know uh, anybody who is listening to us last week <laughs> must have been a little bemused by the fact that we'd got it completely wrong forgotten when we should have been doing this recording and ended up sitting up in bed at half past five in the morning it's the only it. time in the, in our history of doing any of this <laughs> that both of us have completely forgotten and the main reason was because we'd had our grandson for two days running in the wrong part of the week <laughs> and well and a few us. other things and i think yeah. other people know what it's like when structure disappears and nothing happens on the right day but yeah. maybe nobody could be as silly as us but we had a lovely email about it didn't we, we did yeah <laughs> Um, it, it sounds quite exotic, doesn't it? Recording in bed. <laughs> I can assure you, it was probably the opposite. I didn't say erotic; I said exotic. <laughs> anyway, our friend, our good friend, who writes to us often, said, "We started with no shore in sight, and then sounding the shadows, and now Adrian and Bridget from the bedroom." <laughs> I'm sure this will impact on your listening figures. Yes, they'll go down uh, without doubt. I was thinking, he says, about what Bridget said about the I'm not a robot exercise. Oh yes, because I was talking with. about the fact that you get this square with lots of little squares and you have to, for example, put a, you know, you press on, on the ones that have got traffic lights or something. Right, the yeah. de-skilling effect of any of these things on me yeah. is quite profound. Well, it turns <laughs> me into a gibbering idiot. <laughs> Anyway, my friend says it would that would definitely go into his room 101. For those who don't know what that is, and everybody must, it's the, in room 101 you put the things you want to get rid of out of the world, <laughs> and it, it's a it's a TV series in England, probably in other countries, um, and also in room 101 he says would go um, manage my cookies. I agree <laughs> with that. Complicated Wi-Fi passwords. And he says, what about a Christian room for 101? And he mm. says, I would include, these are his things, relentless hugs during the piece. <laughs> oh, Some may disagree with that. I don't know. <laughs> Soupy voices. He says, that's a phrase he learned from me. And people who preface controversial views with the words, God has told me. <laughs> and uh, 101, we talked before, didn't we, about uh, uh, Psalm 101. What was the point about that? <sighs> Well, I, it was all to do with the fact that we thought that uh, David would very, very much like to dump that particular psalm that he'd written mm -hmm. at a good point in his life into yeah. Room 101 because it was all about what he would do with people who lied, people who, who did yeah. wrong things yeah. in his household and what he would do yeah. for them. And he said this he was, would get it all right, didn't he? he? This yeah. was pre-Bathsheba yeah. and the mess that came after yeah. that and out of that. So he'd put that so in there. So we think he would, yeah. The Soupy Voices goes back to when I first started uh, speaking in churches and imitating Soupy Voices, like people at the beginning of the meeting saying, OK, I just want everybody to just sit quietly and you know all this stuff. And the relentless hugs, I'm not sure... Whether I suppose we all feel a bit differently about that. We've known people who back out of the room just <laughs> as the hugs begin, mm. and there are others who seem to quite enjoy them, and mm. then everything in, be mm. in between the two. It's so the wild-eyed of the people who you approach, yes. who have got this massive, almost a sign saying, please don't hug yes, me. Don't and then what me. do you do? Do you shake hands? Do you... No, it's it's always going to be tricky. Well, I did. I don't know if I mentioned it. But there was one person I said to this lady, because I had sort of hugged her, but I wasn't sure. And I said, I just want to ask you, is it all right for me to hug you? Yes. And she thought about it as though she was studying a, um, some kind of um, technical journal and said, yes, 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 that's fine. 
Yeah. Uh, actually, I was quite pleased by that. Because yeah, but you can't so. go around. No, you can't go around everybody, everybody saying that. The peace no. would go on forever uh, anyway. No. Anyway, so this week um, on television, particularly on Thursday morning. Ah, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. But the highlight or low light for some, I suppose, for lots of younger people was uh, finding out what their A level results were. Ah. Uh, yeah. And there was in there, they were filming them as they opened their envelopes. Oh, really? I didn't see that. And there was such that. hope and such passion and such devastation yeah. uh, as they as they worked on their feelings about how they'd done. And there was some very good stuff about alternative routes for for yeah. uh, people who feel they failed. And well, the fact that there's there's we always can't something give you back. can do to our young people and I'm pretty sure wherever in the world you might be listening to this you might agree we can't give back the Covid years no, um, we can't, no. the great gaps in education no. and there have been lots and lots of attempts to try to do that but the problem for England in particular uh, I think even more than Scotland or Ireland or Wales is that they are trying to get to give A level, which is the route into university, credibility mm. again. Whereas yeah. there was a lot of gentleness, a lot of, a lot of understanding to mm. the point that people were getting maybe much higher marks uh, than than they would normally have got. And I mean, to be honest, Adrian, looking right back, the many, many, many years ago when we did this sort of exam, yeah. there was a small proportion of people who got the brilliant, brilliant results. So it was, it, you know, I, well, that's it how it seems, changed. looking back. Yeah. yeah I think anyway, so. it's, a, it's a big, big week for them after it some is. people working it really, is. really hard. It is. Uh, I think for me, uh, this week, somehow managing to have our second eye cataract operations on Wednesday morning yes. and then arriving home mid-morning to find that our son had heroically not watched the semi-final of the Ladies Football World Cup between Australia and England and that it was all <laughs> ready for us to watch the whole match on iPlayer and have a cup of tea with it and then go straight to the second half without bothering with the halftime chat. That, yeah. was, that was luxury. I, I mean, I think, you know, anyone seeing us would would have thought it a little strange because we both had, um, when you've had a cataract operation, you have a sort of shield put over your eye, the eye that's been operated on. So we were both sitting there with our hands over that particular eye and watching it one-eyed. Well, that's right. It yeah. must have yeah. looked absurd. It's a sort of Bertie Worcester. Uh, yeah. type uh, monocle thing you wear yeah. I mean it is difficult to put in I mean I suppose the thing for us Adrian is we love Australia so much uh, never has true. there been we a country yeah. that has welcomed us in mm. the way that Australia has welcomed us over the years and mm. um, so that was one whole part of it really we didn't go into it um, I mean I know the pain you have over the ashes you know yeah. because you've got these mixed feelings you want to win them well not you personally <laughs> but mm. we love Australia and I think that was all going on it was, it watching was, yeah. the match yeah no, I, 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 it really caused a lot of feeling in me um, as you say not just because of England either winning or losing Although it um, was rather nice. Yes, it was, I think I was able to live with them winning. <laughs> um, but now we have another very tricky decision, don't we? Uh, to make the What's World Cup. What's that then? Well, the World Cup final, mm -hmm. the latest World Cup final between Spain, who are very good, and England, takes place at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Oh, yes. So the question is breakfast, coffee, and football, <laughs> or the Sunday morning service? So, what would Jesus do? <laughs> oh, Adrian, <laughs> I'm not even going there. I'll tell you what, though, I mm. found rather wonderful. Yeah. Is, mm. um, I, as you know, um, on Thursdays, I help with our church community cafe. I have coffee noticed shop. you disappear I on know. Thursday. But, yeah. but the point I was going to make was that there are a group of men who are older men who come in uh, probably on other days as well, but certainly on a Thursday. And they've all been really involved with sport in the past. And this morning, I only heard snatches of their conversation, but they were dissecting that match yeah. with the same vigour 
as I've always heard men dissecting, having three sons who were very into football and you enjoy it as well, dissecting men's football. And I thought it really has arrived and it is a wonderful symbol mm -hmm. for girls. Yeah. That, that something so vigorous, something so disciplined, something mm. so... And I mean, the talent in Australia is obviously just waiting to, to come to the fore. Mm. And, and our Lionesses have been building towards becoming a team that really gives to each other mm. in a way that um, I think sometimes maybe men's football could even yeah. learn from. And I, I love know. the fact that the, I don't know really. the change is not, is not a... a, a um, a construct or an invented thing it's actually developed through a lot of hard work yeah. and really really devoted work from people uh, so that now we have we have uh, girls young girls really wanting to learn football yeah. and becoming really really good at it i think, yeah. I think it's absolutely it is. fantastic it's very, very but just looking about i was saying we about the dilemma between uh, church and football this sunday oh. when our kids were little we had our own little dilemma didn't we well, and, and parents, I don't know about the rest of the world, but certainly in the UK do, in that in the sport, and, and I don't think it's just football, actually. I think it's, uh, I, I know it's netball, and, and actually it's also dance. You know, a lot goes on on a Sunday morning, yeah. and you have that massive dilemma, especially if your child is talented in one of these areas. Um as to the choices you make it's a real yeah. dilemma uh, yeah. and we certainly struggle with it with one of our sons didn't we yeah, yeah. And, and the interesting thing was that for him we did finally make the decision uh, that we couldn't handle him sitting like a slumped blob yes. for an hour in church yeah. yearning to play football but yeah. he wasn't listening to anything. He was fed up. So yeah. we decided he could play. We actually, after all, didn't want another slumped blob sitting in church, did we? <laughs> I don't know what that Yes, means. another one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking Never mind. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. Right, but yeah. I do remember that we fell between all stools because yeah. we would rush from our service immediately at finish down to the football field mm. with people feeling that we were just not really involved with our church in the way that they mm. would have expected us to be. We went down to the football field and we were yeah. really disapproved of there. Except there we saw parents really worshipping, <laughs> oh, didn't we? <laughs> I don't know, we saw a lot of things. <laughs> we, saw, we, we saw parents, parents doing all sorts of things, but it, it was as passionate as any match we've ever seen oh, anywhere. Oh yes, of course, it? of yeah. course. Of and very course. important to our children. Well, it was. Did we make the right decision? Who I knows? Don't know. I, I don't know. know. I well, think you wrestle with these things, really. One thing that we, we have been thinking about, which is vaguely interesting, is that there are a lot of programs now about kids joining uh, these training um, academies. academies and developing their talents, and some of them do very well and move on to become professionals, and some don't quite, and some... Oh, some get dropped. Oh, yeah, That's all, another sort, whole all sorts of things though. happen. But... Uh, we were wondering, you know, it, I don't know that this is so, but one assumes that for many of these children, girls and boys now, when they're littler, they they probably dream of being frontline goal scorers, you know, people who get the ball to the back of the net. I'm not sure if that's so. And we were wondering how as the time goes by and they find out that perhaps they have talents for defending and supporting they never knew were there, uh, that, that lie more in defence and support than, than the flashier stuff at the front. And how you make that um, that move to understanding that your role as a supporter and a defender mm. is as important as anything that happens mm. Uh, mm. at the other end of the mm. pit. It, it's, a, it's a really interesting one, this, isn't it? I mean, do defenders in sport get the same almost adulation as the goal scorers in, in any sport, whether, you know, whatever it is, do they, are they, are they, I, I'm not quite sure. But certainly for us, I mean, our experiences, the need for support has always been really vital, hasn't it? Um, yeah, so well, we've never, never been stars. No, but what we have had a, a, quite a lot of chances to find out how important real support is. And um, you were making a point the other day that when we were we don't, we're doing 
nowhere near as much stuff as we used to do now, traveling and speaking. But when we were traveling a, a, an enormous amount and speaking a lot, there were, there were, among others, there were two people who we really relied on. Yeah. One was a youngish girl in her early 20s um, who had enormous problems of her own. And one was a very elderly lady who had felt that um, she couldn't participate in um, act Christian church activities in the and same way. And she'd always been very active. She'd and always she been active. she really yeah. believed in prayer. And she prayed yeah. for us yes, as we traveled. Did. And so did the, the girl. Yeah. And I, I kid you not, we, somehow it was... Hugely important It was magical us. with a small M or whatever, a large size yeah. M you like, that yeah. those two people knew what we were doing knew we'd gone to do it and were silently uh, supporting that mm -hmm. through prayer and thinking about us. It was wonderful to know it that. Was, it was. It was. easy to forget that. <sighs> yes. Hmm. I, it's interesting really, I mean because we've got the Gospels, because we've got all the stories of Jesus, we we, it's so easy to focus on the big things, isn't it? The times when it was pretty, pretty sort of spectacular. But mm. actually, we've also, I know we've talked about this before, about the fact that Jesus always made sure that he fully backed what the miracle that had just happened by mm. making sure that the right thing happened for that person. We mm. talked about Zacchaeus last week, about how... He could have just said, oh, hello, Zacchaeus, and that would have been pretty amazing in itself, knowing his name. Mm. But he took it further, very publicly, going to his house. The woman, another one of these almost catchphrases, the woman with the issue of blood, mm. he didn't just allow her to be healed. He, he, he got behind the whole situation mm. to support her in being able to go back to the temple. Yeah. Um, and and really, in one sense, took a step backwards to do those things uh, uh, before going to the place where everyone else thought he would yes. immediately go. And it was the yeah. same with kids in care, wasn't it? Um, well, when we worked with them. Uh, you're thinking of the walks. <laughs> yeah, the walks. <laughs> well, yeah. our walks, and we again, we may have talked about this, but our walks with children when we first started working were an extraordinary thing. I mean, they were like an, a major expedition, weren't they? They needed quite a lot of planning because the children were... Uh, how would you describe it? I mean, they weren't into nice, neat, strong walking. We had such a mixture. And so you needed a leader at the front. Hmm. Then you needed somebody in the middle who would... Well, you need a leader at the front with big, strong legs. <laughs> and, um, big, strong ideas. And an interest in walking. <laughs> and, the, the, and, no, the, and somebody who knew where they were going. That's right. And the, <laughs> kid, the kids who also enjoyed that would be in an energetic bunch with that person and there were know. some like yeah, that yeah, yeah. But and then, then there'd be me in the, the middle yeah. talking about the philosophy of walking oh come on and uh no, you discussing the true meaning of, of <laughs> no but no, i mean but seriously i, I would be with quite good chats kids who like kids. talking yeah, yes that, exactly that's, that's right yeah and, and then, also keeping the pace yes keeping because the pace, you, you know yeah, you had to keep yeah, it all going yeah. well my role then uh, was a shoelace tire really I mm. mean my role was I remember there was a very large boy who absolutely hated walking mm. and an asthmatic child who really needed to have exercise but but was quite fragile and mm. and that was my role being at the back and keeping maybe those two mm. the ones who could easily have failed just trying to keep them going um, I'm not sure how far away we've got from the idea of defenders in oh, well, in in sport, but maybe we have. No, I think this is precisely that that yeah. that in order to keep the body going, the yes. whole group going. Yeah, you need people uh, strategically placed to be assist and support different yeah. kinds of people mm, and mm. and who aren't going to run up and try and get the goal but who are going to yeah, try and pass right. the ball yeah. to the people whose role it is to get yeah. the goal isn't it interesting yeah. i, know, I yeah. know of no um, pictures of jesus the shoelace tire it's a shame really i think i've said before i would love someone to do that picture 
I think it would be a wonderful, wonderful picture yeah. of him bending to yeah. to, to do yeah. up somebody's shoes. Because these yeah. heroes, and there is somebody, isn't there, who uh, in the very early church sort of fits the role of somebody who you wouldn't look at twice necessarily. Uh, and I'm thinking of Dorcas, mm. you know, just ordinary, in I Acts. suppose. In Acts, in yeah, Acts, Acts of the yeah, Apostles. Yeah. And, I mean, she was probably quite ordinary. But when Peter went there... It, she, she died, hadn't she? She died, yeah. yeah. And, and all these people were showing him the clothes that she'd made, yeah. the things she'd done for them, the support mm. she'd given. Yeah. It's a very moving story. I love to think of Dorcas, who apparently then came back to life, yeah. finding that um, Peter had been told all about her clothes and yes. maybe speaking to him and saying, well, it was nothing really. I just <laughs> enjoy making clothes for people. Yeah. And him saying, no, you've been, you've been fantastic. They've told me about what you do. Yeah. It's a great encouragement to those people. And they, people have said to me, oh, I'm, I'm just practical. Oh. I don't... Just a yeah, just a oh, just we a, hear it a so often. Yeah. I just give out the hymn books. I mm. just clean the church. I just yes, we hear it far too often, really. Yeah, yeah I've always always uh, been interested in a particular um, couple of verses in Matthew, um, which talk about those who either welcome or. Uh, either a prophet or a righteous person and, and help them. I want to read them. You've got them here. Look, um, it's chapter 10, uh, 41 and 42. Mm. Well, 41. Oh, oh, right. No, I think it's 41, 41 42. Um, and this is it. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. I'll just read that again. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. In other words, when you know that somebody is working hard to do something um, and that they they will need support and you provide that support, mm. then you're in it together. Mm. And therefore, what Jesus was saying, I suppose, was that the reward that comes for that is the same for both of them. And whoever welcomes a, a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I think he's made the point, but the famous bit, of course, verse 42, if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. And for those who are not capable of giving, doing huge things mm. or helping people in, in obviously massive ways, mm. it's encouraging, mm. isn't it? Mm. To know that, mm. and, and people have done it for me over the years, mm. done some little thing for me that has meant meant I've been able to just get up again and move on again. Mm. Um, so no, I love the mm. fact that the supporters are, are bracketed with the supported. It's great. Yes, and, and I think that that even applies. I mean, we talk about the word supporters, don't we? Football supporters, whatever. Mm. People who, who are not going to be out there maybe never could have been out there doing something, whether it's football or whatever it is, mm. but they're there support in a supportive role. Yeah. And they really are. They yeah. care, they cry, they shout, they they jump about, they mm. they are in despair if it's lost, but they are there. They're they are supporting. Yeah. Um, and yeah. obviously in this last match, uh, there were rather more Australians than there were, obviously, because it's in Australia. Mm. But um, the trouble is, I love Australia, so mm, I, so I kept wondering. I, I wonder if any yeah. of our friends are sitting there watching this match. Mm. Mm, I don't know. I doubt if they were saying, come on, England. I know, of course <laughs> they weren't. I, I, I just quickly, because we have to finish, but I love the fact I've occasionally heard people say about somebody else, I think he's got my back or she's got yes. my back. Yes. And uh, someone even said, when, when I get to the gates of heaven, I think he's got my back. Meaning, yeah. you know, I'm not sure, but I think he's someone who would he say... He believes say, in me. Yeah, he believes in me. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So... <sighs> Wow. Good old supporters. <laughs> yes, and by next week we'll know whether England actually did. Yes, whether they won or <laughs> lost. 
And will we go to church or will we watch the match? <laughs> Adrian, I think we're going to stop at this point and yes, we'll I talk to you next week. Yeah, bye-bye.